Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to SP Apparel's Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Ilara Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Priyana Jinjanwala from Ilara Securities Private Limited. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Rizal. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Ilara Securities Private Limited, I would like to welcome you all to Q1 FI23 Post Result Conference Call of SP Apparels Limited. Today, we have the senior management of the company, including Mr. P. Sundar Rajan, Chairman and Managing Director, Mrs. S. Lata, Executive Director, Mr. S. Chenduran, Executive Director, Mrs. P. V. Jiva, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. V. Balaji, Chief Financial Officer of the company. I would now like to hand over the call to the senior management of the company for initial comments, and thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. A very warm greetings to all of you present on the call call to discuss our Q1 FY23 performance. I hope and wish that all of you and your loved ones are healthy and safe. I would like to update you all on the buyback where due to certain regulatory process which needs to be fulfilled, the board will deliberate on the buyback plan after the regulatory complaint fulfilled in a couple of weeks time. As you are aware about the performance of the company during this quarter, we have performed well. Our margins in terms of value have been the best performance so far. Let's review the performance division wise. Government division. Our government division revenue for this quarter stood at 223 crores versus 116 crores for Q1 FY22, which is at a growth of 93% year on year. Total exported quantity stood at 14.8 million pieces. Adjusted EBITDA of the government division stood at 48.2 crores for the current quarter as against adjusted EBITDA of 29 crores year on year. Our current order book stands at around 400 crores. We have, we are, uh, we, we are in the process of adding two, two more customers, new customers, uh, from Q3 onwards. Regarding free trade agreement FTA for UK, it's a long-awaited one and our commerce and industries minister has indicated that it would happen very soon in the near future on account of 75th independence annual. If this happens, it will be a great advantage and opportunity to India as we would be at the same level playing field with our other competitor countries like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, etc. This would also improve the orders in flow to our country. With regard to capacity utilization, it is around 75% and is expected to increase by around 10 to 15% more going forward. As we informed you earlier, our new factory in the down south is under process and is expected to be completed by end of June 23. Regarding spinning, now we have invested into one megawatt of solar plants in our spinning plant as part of our sustainability strategy program. And going forward, we propose to increase one megawatt every year. The plant has commenced only during the month of July and is expected to contribute, uh, contribute to the margin going forward. Further, the cotton prices are very volatile and the fluctuations in the yarn price are not in correlation to the cotton prices. We have reduced our yarn production during the month of July and August until the price stabilizes. We expect the cotton prices to decrease during November. 
we are expecting a reduction in spending margins during q2 due to the hike in cotton prices and fall in the yarn prices with regard to the fabric processing division in spite of shortage of coal availability and the rise in the input cost our processing division was able to perform well with good utilization level and con on contributing margin effectively regarding sp uk it has seen a lot of disruptions in supply chain majorly due to the third wave in the uk and europe non availability of adequate containers has interrupted the supply chain severely and disturbed the revenue for the current quarter revenue for the quarter stood at gbp 1.21 million as against gbp 1.12 million last year sp uk has made loss of gbp 33000 as against loss of 8000 I am confident that SP UK will be able to come out of the crisis and will be able to do well going forward from Q3 22 onwards. With regard to SP Retail Ventures Limited, as planned, we have hived out the retail division into a separate company, and we have added two more brands under this retail portfolio. We have added a children's brand known as Angel and Rocket. which is a premium brand and the sp retail ventures limited we have also added one more brand under the retail ventures portfolio which is fed an international brand which is well known for tennis and skiing has given license to sp retail ventures limited to manufacture and sell apparel and footwear goods goods in india under the brand fed this brand comes under the athleisure segment currently we have 59 stores under all brands we have opened two new stores for angel and rocket in bangalore which are doing well we have also opened stores for head which is also doing well we are confident that with brands like crocodile head and angel rocket and also natalia it will do very well and will be able to get this company listed at an appropriate time separately financial performance of sp retail venture total revenue for retail stood at 17.14 crore and we had a positive ebit of rupees 50 lakhs and we have a loss of 40 lakhs for the first for the first quarter current liquidity our liquidity position is strong and we have serviced all the debt up to date i now i will pass on um, the financial by uh, mr balaji cfo and thank you thank you sir uh, good evening everybody i'll just run through uh, the financials of the company uh, with this in the presentation uh, we have a total revenue of 252 crores As against 131 crores year on year, which is a 92 percent increase, and we have an EBITDA adjusted EBITDA of 48.45 crores as against 27.83 uh, year on year, which is an increase of 74 percentage. We have our PBT at 35.45 crores as against 16.82 crores year on year, which is 111 percent increase, and we have our bad uh, bad margins. At 25 crores, 25.8 crores, as against 11.55 year on year, which is an increase of 123 percentage. Uh, garment division uh, made a revenue of 223 crores, as against 116 crores year on year, which is a 93 percent increase. EBITDA margin for the garment division stood at 21.6 percentage, as against 26 last year. And uh, our revenue from uh, retail operations stood at 17.1 crore, as against 4.5 crores last year. And the EBITDA margins for retail division stood at positive 2.9 percentage, as against negative 53 percentage last time. And the UK stood at 12 crores, uh, as against 11 crores last year. 
and the EBITDA margins for retail uh, is at minus 1.9 percentage, that's against positive 0.3 percentage year on year. Our, our current uh, debt position is uh, we have uh, net, a gross debt of 199 crores and a net debt of 171 crores. Our uh, working capital, as part of working capital, we have 38 crores as inventory, 78 crores as receivables, uh, and 50, 59 crores as payable for the current quarter. Rest information is available in the presentation, and we can get into the question and session right away. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question? May please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remember yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. There are more than 20 parties in the conference. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Shika Mehta from Equity Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Congratulations on a great set of numbers. I just had a couple of questions. On the retail side, we've done very well. Uh, so is this a run rate we can consider going forward for the rest of the year? And also, could you throw some light on uh, what strategy has worked for us, what changed, etc.? Uh, in terms of the uh, the, the uh, run rate going forward, I guess uh, we have already explained you on the growth uh, that's right. coming. You can definitely look forward for same set of numbers going forward. It is. It's regarding retail, right? You are yeah. talking about retail? Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the retail side, yes. Yeah. yeah, see, in the, in the retail side, see, as I mentioned to you, now we have been... Uh, we have, you know, three brands under this umbrella. Natalie is also in the pipeline, which is our own brand. So currently we have Angel and Rocket, you know, premium kids segment, our own brand, company's own brand, I mean, uh, uh, SP Retail's own brand, and uh, Natalie is also own brand. Crocodile is a licensee brand, which uh, we have been doing for the past 15 years. And uh, um, this head is the one which we, we got the license just before the first COVID lockdown. So this is the current scenario. And with regard to the the performances, because all these retail had, uh, hit, had uh, taken a big hit during this uh, continuous COVID lockdown. And again, in Tamil Nadu, many um, <coughs> for weeks, Saturdays and days are not open. So we had a big hit. Now everything is back on track now. So Crocodile is uh, doing extremely well, and we have about uh, uh, number of 50, 59 stores. 59 stores, our, our EBO stores, in addition to distribution channels and the shopping shop, like um, large format stores. <coughs> so Crocodile is definitely has turned around and is uh, doing extremely well. With regard to Angel and Rocket, our own brand, so uh, this is. Uh, after the lockdown, COVID lockdown, this now only we are taking the the aggressive steps now. Uh, uh, we have the presence in Shopper Stop, Lifestyle, Central, which is uh, Reliance Central, and so on. And also with uh, uh, we have opened our own two stores in Bangalore, Island Rocket, which is doing very well. So it will take about another few quarters to break even and and. Uh, to be able to make profits. With regard to Head, Head is, uh, I think everyone knows, it's a famous brand globally. Uh, right. uh, originally it's from the US and now it's been owned by Austrian uh, owners. So we have got the license for India for um, athleisure apparel as well as footwear for India um, mm -hmm. under the name of Head. So now we have one store open at Chennai. And we have few more stores in the pipeline of EBO stores. 
Right. And we already have the presence in uh, um, central uh, head, and we are talking. There is a dial uh, um, discussion going on with the central relays, where you know there is a possibility of you know uh, getting presence uh, in about uh, about uh, 50 to 60 so stores. So this is the the, the this is a, a brief about the retail business model. All right, sir. So also on the volume front, uh, as shown on slide number nine, I think we are still, as an FI twenty two, we are still not doing the same volumes we did pre COVID. And if we continue at the run rate we've done this quarter, we should just about touch our pre COVID volume number. So can you explain why that is? Is that because we're seeing slower demand or? uh can you explain that and uh, as part of the same question our pro, uh, total turnover has been higher than pre covid levels so is that because of raw material hikes because of which we've had to take price hikes or is there another component to it as well you are talking about the vita margins right okay, no. uh so i'm talking about the volumes 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 actually, uh, uh, comparing last year, year on year quarter, we have definitely moved 20% ahead in terms But of volume. volume. Yes. So this year means our volume that we go at the same run rate will be the same as they were in FY19, approximately. Correct? Correct. Correct. Uh, FY19 was was uh, FY19 was a different story where uh, 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 we had some. Uh, order postponement issues postponed to FY20, and uh, where our projects were uh, delayed. Uh, if you uh, if you look into the uh, call uh, transcript FY20, uh, you would have, uh, you would understand. So expecting the projects to be completed, we took orders and we were not able to uh, complete the orders in house. We have to outsource it and complete it. So that is. FY20. So I guess you should not look at FY. No, one minute. I think FY21. That is during the COVID. Uh, there was a partial lockdown. FY21. So the sales was drop. So for ideally, we should you know compare with uh, uh, FY19, uh, where you know it was that was the year where it was no interruptions uh, during the whole year. So if we compare like for like from FI twenty uh, FI nineteen to FI twenty three, I think we are uh, we are we are as far as uh, slightly more. And this is uh, your question is is because of the raw material increase or something that is only playing partly in this number, but there has been a growth in the in the in the capacity also in the sense in fi19 we were having about 3300 machines running and now it's about 3400 machines on an average so that is one reason and little bit of increase in the raw material prices but yes, let us so not compare with fi20 and fi fi21 talking about fi19 only fi19 and fi23 volume should be flat If we go at the same run rate as we have in Q1, though the top line uh, number, the total revenue number, will be much higher. So, is the number, is the revenue number higher due to raw material hikes, and hence we've taken price hikes, or is there something else as well? No, it is. The material increase is about you know about five to ten percent, not much, which is only because of the real increase in the production and the sales. Okay. Because FY19 there was a small disturbance with one of our major customers, so there was a drop in the order book during that year for about about four five months time. So now we have revived everything, we are back on track, and now uh, this uh, Q1 Q2 or we are back to normal. There is going to be a natural increase in the uh, top line. All right. And so, how much of the raw material price hike have we been able to pass on? It's about five percent. Pass on to customers. Around five percent. Up to ten percent. It depends on the customer to customer. Five to ten percent we are able to pass on. All right, sir. 
and uh, we said in an opening remarks that cotton will be cooling off we assume in november suppose that do we need to correct our uh, finished good prices as well or how does it function normally yeah there's definitely there will be a reduction in the sales price also unit price also because customers are also waiting to uh, waiting for the right time to get back to normal so in fact you know they mentioned that when the cotton price comes down we should uh, we should be in a position to um, to contribute to some extent to be competitive and also are we seeing incremental business coming from the middle east and australia post the fta yes there, there is a possibility but we are not looking at that middle east area middle east countries all right and so could you also shed some light on the status in the uk it seems that there has been some sort of demand slow down so are we experiencing that in our products as well Yes, definitely there is a recession in the all over Europe and the UK uh, due to this uh, Russia-Ukraine war. So definitely there is a recession, and uh, as we always say, uh, the, but uh, with regard to babies and kids, we are not very much affected. Uh, but there is a, a, a kind of a competition uh, with other countries like Sri Lanka and Bangladesh because everyone is in need of orders. so that is the challenge we are facing but we are able to manage so far by you know uh, to be uh, being competitive to some extent where there is a um, what do you call the margin is been very tight now however we are working internally to see how we can mitigate this you know uh, reduction in margin and get back to the same position in terms of margin right Uh, and so also our interest cost has gone up a significant amount this quarter so is that due to an increase in debt or how should we look at that and is that again the runway to consider for the rest of the year no i think uh, uh, the interest costs have gone up just by some 40 50 lakhs and uh, it is purely because of the uh, the, the material cost going up uh, carrying cost on the inventory is also going up so the utilization level is also going up so uh, going forward i don't see that there will be a, uh, a big uh, increase in the interest cost all right so and last question if i may uh, could you also tell me what our profit number would be adjusting for the forex gain and loss or uh, there are in uh, in your presentation i think on slide number 10 there are two line items one is gain on forex currency and then below that there's m to m gain so if you could just explain so forex gain is the difference between the spot and the realization m to m is a notional number which is pertaining to the outstanding forward contracts so that's it all right so all right thank you so much thank you thank you A reminder to the participants: Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Neeraj Mansinka from White Pine Investment Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. I just wanted to have uh, two questions: one on manufacturing and one on employee. Uh, can you tell me what is the capacity of machines right now, and how it will move forward in next two to three years? Like when will the capacity get added, uh, and how and some of the step ups it can tell me? Yes, yeah, so currently we are running close. So we have total about five thousand hundred machines installed capacity, and currently we are using about seventy five percent of it, uh, which comes to around. The, Three thousand. I mean, close to four thousand. Right. And uh, uh, in the next three months' time, we are expecting this to go up to eighty, eighty-five percent by November, December. So, equalization, which means it will cross about four thousand two hundred machines. We hope to cross. Right. And uh, so, in the future, probably in twelve months from now, next so, uh, next one year time. We are we are expecting an increase of another about about 15 to 20 percent increase in the machine capacity from current scenario. 
So, which will definitely take in the growth of 15 to 20 percent additional in business. Okay, so, so 20 months from now, you'll get a capacity reduction, not due to that. Sorry? Uh, how many months from now will you add 20 percent machine? So, so will be what around the 500 to 700 machines. In, in how many months from now? 12 months. 12 months. Okay, 12 months. And uh, till 12 months period, your number of machines will remain at stable to 5,100. Only utilization would increase. Is it right to say? From now, we will add another, say, 700 or 800, where we should be very close to 6,000. And our utilization level should be uh, increasing going forward. I'm sorry, I could not hear the last line. When, when will you add 700 to 800? See, by next year, I know there will be. See, there are two methods of increasing the production. It's not yes. physical machines alone because there, we will be adding on another about 300 to 400 machines next year by now. And also, in addition to that, we are increasing with the existing capacities. Still, we have room for increasing in all our existing factories. So, all those idle machines will be filled. That's the second thing. And third one is. As we have been mentioning in the last few gone calls, that we are planning for two factories starting with second shift. So already we have started one factory with the second shift about the two lines. So gradually in every quarter we will be increasing two to three lines in the, in the second shift. So by all these combinations we will be able to increase our production capacity by about 600 to 700 machines. Okay, we got it. But physical machines, they will add only in 12 months from now. But by using more and more uh, double shift, you will add utilization of those machines in the next one year from now. Is it right to say that? Correct, correct. Oh, got it. And I guess other thing is on the employee, uh, number of employees. How many employees do you have right now? About uh, 12, around 12,500. Because we are backward integrated. So all put together, we should be having close to 12,500 employees. Okay. And uh, any, can you give some color on how you're planning to hire and retain? Because that has been the uh, biggest uh, you know, slowdown, or you can say that was the biggest important factor for your growth in the past. Uh, we have strategized in terms of the uh, question, sir. Uh, about the employee. Yeah, see, this is, uh, yes, you know, I have been uh, in informing all these phone calls that there is a challenge in mobilizing yeah. the, the manpower workforce. Yeah. And uh, as I mentioned last time that we are nearly able to come out of this issue. Yes, now I, I would proudly say that we are out of this challenge problems and we are able to mobilize the workforce the way we want it. So henceforth, this was the only constraint uh, this company was having uh, you know, for the growth. But now on, once this has been um, and this, once this has been turned around now, we are in a, in a position that we can increase the workforce easily by 15-20% and it, it will not be a bottleneck. We Hopefully we say that it should not be a bottleneck hereafter. Can you give some color how you took, uh, how this, you overcome the challenge of your workforce? Sure. See, that is our internal it's a big subject. I don't think we have enough time to talk about it now. But see, like, uh, in the sense, you know, we, we, we had you know, made attempts in different channels to to get the to get the people mobilized. You know, a lot of network we have done. The big team is working here, so that's a big subject anyway. But we have done it now. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Rakesh Wagwani from Monarch Network. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> sir, uh, can, you just repeat, uh, can you just explain a bit on the point you mentioned in your opening remark regarding the FTA agreement uh, that's going to be implemented from 15th August? I just didn't get the point properly. Can you please help me with that? But I mentioned that, you know, as a part of 75th Independence Anniversary, the government is, uh, is you know, very, very keen to get this FTA done with, uh, uh, with, the, with the United Kingdom, UK. It was just an indication. 
But uh, I've been reading in in the newspapers and getting a lot of information officially from the associations that uh, our uh, in the Commerce and Industries Minister has said yesterday that uh, that we are working very hard on the any moment. The, I think they have done the 18th, the 82nd sitting or something like that. They have, they have they, several rounds of sitting they discussed and more or less done. So we expect any any moment, you know, in the maybe in the next two, three months time, FTA should be through. This is what we know, I guess. So if that comes through, then it's very very good opportunity for India because we will be at par with uh, duty free countries like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan and other countries. Uh, so there will be a same level playing field. So we can uh, we can uh, take more orders at the competitive prices, and definitely if the FTA is announced and the European and I mean UK customers are having the preference to place the orders to India first. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. Uh, sir, one more question. We are reading that uh, in Bangladesh, is, Bangladesh as a country is witnessing power shortage problem. Uh, can you please talk about that and are we getting some order because of that? See, definitely uh, many, many buyers in I was in, in the UK just 10 days back. So everyone has said that they want to divert. See, I mean, last year the, the customers were talking about diverting the business from China. I don't know, suddenly this time they want to divert some of the business from Bangladesh for two reasons. One is that the, the over dumping of uh, orders to Bangladesh, which is too risky for them. And secondly, the, uh, the raw material cost, the power, power problem, power issues and uncertainties on delivery. So this is a worrying, con uh, it's a big concern for the buyers. So they want to place with a safer country. So that's one of the reasons again, that they prefer India. So obviously we are getting some even menswear businesses which are supposed to be produced in Bangladesh is coming to us now. And sir, one more question uh, regarding the buyback. Uh, is there any amount that the company has thought to do buyback? Like Because we have a lesser cash on the books uh, as per the recent uh, presentation. Any amount you have thought? No, still, uh, see, the, the board has not deliberated anything into the amount. As of now, there, are, there is no comment to talk anything about the buyback. Okay, okay. Thank you. I have a further question and I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two for participant only. The next question is on the line of Cost of Power Scar from Sher Khan by BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for giving me the opportunity and congrats for good set of numbers. So my question is again on the demand front. Uh, we just mentioned that uh, you are not witnessing any slowdown uh, in demand due to the uh, recessionary environment in the uh, European uh, countries. Uh, so can you explain us uh, why why so? And uh, if that is the case, then what is the replenishment cycle? You know, uh, in the kids where like. That is what uh, is helping uh, you out, or as you just mentioned, that some of the customer want to shift from Bangladesh and Sri Lanka to India for much stable supply. That is the reason why you are saying that uh, you know this recessionary environment will not uh, lead to lower demand for you. Yeah. Uh, the the first question is, you know, yes, there is a recession all over Europe, US, and the UK as well. Uh, definitely there is no doubt about it and uh, but as I always mentioned that you know the the babies and kids were given an opportunity to spend the the customers will spend such for the you know children um, uh, uh, garments so that is one reason and the second one is also see all these years what I I assume from the way they spoke to me they, were, they have not been comfortable with Bangladesh for whatever reason. So given a choice, they would always like to move to India. Because of this recession, so they really don't need to depend so much on Bangladesh. So they, now they got a room for, you know, this is a time to ship some of the businesses to India because their requirement is less now when compared to previous seasons. 
So that is another second reason why they are coming to India. So this is the right time for them. And keeping in mind the FTA also. So they want to set, set up the factories in India. By the time FTA comes, they will be comfortable in, in the competition. Uh, Mr. Pavaskar? Yeah. Sorry, you done uh, with the question. Uh, I just have another question, uh, second question, if I can ask. Uh, sir, please proceed. Yeah. So uh, the second question is related uh, to the uh, uh, first question. Uh, you just mentioned your initial comment that uh, two more customers are also getting added, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 by quarter three. Uh, so should we expect that this two cost to customers will add on to your revenues from uh, uh, FY24 and not from the uh, second half of the year because uh, uh, that is how it works for you? So the business, I mean, the, the the shipment will be done in Q3, these two customers. It will start. Uh, Mr. Pavaskar, we are unable to hear you. Mr. Pavaskar, we are unable Hello. to hear you. Yeah, my questions are done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to the next question. That is on the line of Yog Mehta from Scan Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir, and congratulations on the success of numbers. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, you talked about the solar plant, which is uh, started in July. Uh, sir, can you talk about how much uh, in, uh, electricity it will generate and uh, compared to how much electricity demand we have given, sir, uh, Many smaller players than us have completely uh, backward captive power supplies. Sir. It's a one megawatt solar plant. Yeah. And we are expecting 5,000 units to be generated every day. Okay, sir. And uh, given, sir, what is the number, uh, like, uh, approximate number of units we uh, require uh, for our operation, sir? Electric number of units of electricity? For us, we, 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 that we as a company, I think it's a, a requirement is huge. So we are looking uh, for us, we, we need a, a eight, 8 megawatt to 10 megawatt of solar power in case if we all go to solar. So uh, we have a huge head, headroom to go into solar. So that's why in the opening remarks, Chairman spoke about uh, increasing this uh, uh, solar one megawatt every year. See, there are two things. You know, one is, you know, gradually we should also get the, the support, you know, to support the margin. So we need a solar uh, uh, power, ener I mean, energy uh, thing, uh, which will also, you know, help us in uh, uh, improve the bottom line. And second thing is also, it's a, it's a, in a kind of a requirement of the day for sustainability. So natural renewable energy is important. All the customers are expecting as against the global one. So we are already taking steps, you know, year on year, minimum of one megawatt, maximum of two to three megawatts year on year. So that in at least the next to five years time we will be self sufficient with our own renewable energy. Because uh, I asked you, sir, uh, 15, 20 times smaller companies than us in the textile sector, sir, they have completely uh, backward integrated, sir, power supply system. So I thought uh, maybe we should, because power is one of the critical components in our uh, industry, sir. And another question, sir, given for uh, another uh, big uh, component of our uh, PNL, sir, uh, heating requirements, sir, we use coal right now. Uh, given, sir, the elevated prices in coal, uh, are we looking at shifting to uh, alternative uh, heating uh, generators like uh, Burgess Oil or Propane or Petroleum Coke like uh, other textile manufacturers have done, sir? Yes, yeah, see, with regard to the own captive energy, Yes, you know, we used to have them before when uh, we had the windmill energy, but you know, in between we, we had sold those wind energies about seven, eight years, ten years back. So now we are, uh, I mean, uh, coming back to uh, backup of our own energy, renewable energy, that's one thing. Where again, it's a question of investment. You see, we have to also bear in mind that, you know, the return on uh, 
uh, our OC is also important, so we cannot put all, you know, it may cost about 100 to 150 crores, all of a sudden we don't want to invest because uh, as such our margins are reasonably good. So what we plan is at the same time we have somewhere we need to start this thing, renewable energy for sustainability purposes also. So that's how we started. Over a, over a period of five years time we will be self-sufficient. And with regard to coal, yes, alternatively we are using fire boilers. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for taking my question, sir. Best of luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shika Mehta from Equity Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. I just had a couple of follow-up questions. Uh, to one of the participants earlier, we spoke about uh, the additional capacity we were adding plus the second shift. So all of that put together, how much revenue will we be able to add at optimal utilization? Optimal utilization will be, as we mentioned, around 80 to 85 percent. And the, the, the growth we expect is about 15 to 20 percent. So, I meant all our new capacity plus the second shift, uh, all of that put together, how much revenue can we add? Uh, 15 to 20 percent. 15 to 20 percent? Yes. Okay. And uh, so, I had another question. If you could give us what percentage uh, we are in all our top five brands, wallet share? Or wallet Sorry, share can we come again on the question? What wallet share we have in percentage terms in our top five brands we supply to? What is it? Wallet share. Our wallet share of what? Uh, the customer, you mean? Right, right. I say one customer is about 40%, and the second one is about 20, 25%, and another one 15 and the remaining all about uh, around the 5 to 10%. Uh, so I mean, us in their books. Out of their total supply, how much would we be supplying to them? Oh, that way. From their, in their books, you mean? Right. Oh. See, for one customer, about, about 80, 82%, and another customer is another about, say, about 30, 40%. Third one is, you know, they are quite big, and I'm, I'm, I'm too early to know the exact uh, share of ours in their buying. Um, okay. Then the remaining all you know just starting, so uh, not much. No. But for our top four customers, we are 82 percent of their total suppliers and 40 percent of their total suppliers. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Rakesh Wagwani from Monarch Network. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity once again. So I want to understand a little bit more or further about the Bangladesh uh, competitiveness compared to us. Uh, can you just talk or uh, talk or give us a with example? Explain what is the competitive advantage that Bangladesh has with respect to cost and why it is coming down. See, they, they are competitive because of their low labor costs and the duty free to the importing country. And uh, the, but because of the uncertainties in delivery and this uh, ethical, you know, factory compliances is still in question. Um, then you know uh, the over dumping into Bangladesh because of the competition among the retailers. Everyone wants the cheaper uh, imported goods, so everyone wanted to place more orders to Bangladesh, but they had no other choice. So now, uh, which means that by force, they, on one side by force, they went to place more orders into Bangladesh. At the same time, they felt, you know, hijacked because of the uncertainties in deliveries and uncertainties in the ethical compliances and etc. So, now that India is becoming very strong and FDA is expected and there is a recession in the Europe, UK and the US, so they are using this the reduced buying, they want to first give to India, the balance to the Bangladesh country. 
So that's the strategy it looks like. So just so just uh, wanted to confirm that FTA, FTMO, like if it, India is also included in the FTA, that will be a big change uh, towards India from Bangladesh. Yes, we are keeping that also in mind that, you know, hoping that if they start placing the orders now, they are hoping by the time we ship from India landed to UK or Europe, or maybe UK now, so they might, there is a good chance of getting the duty free. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of course of Pavaskar by Sher Khan by PNP Paraba. Please go ahead. Mr. Kostar Pavaskar, your line is yeah. on the top. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Uh, my uh, question is on the margin front. Uh, sir, uh, in your initial comment, you mentioned that uh, uh, second quarter, uh, uh, you will continue to film the hit on the uh, margins. And uh, from second half, uh, there would be, uh, uh, you know, gradual improvement in the margins. So is it a right understanding? Yeah, that's correct. What we, what we gave you is a guideline last time also, the same thing we are doing now. Uh, the Q1, Q2, the Q1 results are what we have declared is better than what we anticipated because we have done a lot of internal things to improve the margins and things. But you know, it was uncertain while we were talking to you during the FY22 results. Say we Q2 also, uh, that you know, it's again uh, we have to undergo these difficulties because of the, uh, the cotton prices are up on the highest. I have said cotton stock we everyone has now and the yarn price is coming down so this is a completely different uh, direction so that is one challenge is there and most of the most of the garment manufacturers have booked the orders uh, at the lower yarn price but the yarn price has gone up uh, during the yarn price increase everyone has covered the yarn so there is going to be a, a tough uh, the numbers in Q2. However, as far as SPFL is concerned, uh, we we are confident that we should be in a position to maintain the same as in Q1. Okay. Okay, sir. Maybe maybe little maybe little one or two percent less also. I mean, it's too early to say that. Right. And my second question is: There are more than 20 parties in the conference. Uh, once the capacity utilization goes up to around 80-85%, uh, you know, what uh, uh, incrementally how much it will add to your margins? As you said that 15-20% to 20 will be added to your revenues. In terms of margins also because of the efficiency, how much it, uh, you know, help us to improve? The percentage may not be the same, but in, in value terms, there should be definitely an increase. Okay. Okay. We have been guiding for a margin of 18% and we would like to stick to that in spite of increase in the cotton prices, we would like to stick to the guidance which we have given already that we will maintain 18% minimum, at least 18%. Okay sir, thank you, thanks for it. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Okay, uh, uh, thanks for everyone's uh, participation and uh, the thanks for the various questions you have asked. And I'm, I, I'm sure that I hope I have been able to answer all your questions to the point. And uh, as I always say that we are very confident about the, the business model what we have. And the, me and the entire team is working so hard to make sure that, you know, we continuously improve in terms of top line and the bottom line which we have been consistently proving to the, the shareholders. Uh, and the, the, we see a great future in the next few quarters. It's, it's very visible, very visible, obvious that, you know, uh, order book is now 400 and the capacity is going to go on and the FTA is, you know, is on the way. And so a lot of positive things are happening. So we are confident that, you know, we should be doing great numbers in the coming future. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Lara Securities Private Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.